Hello everyone, I am Amelia. Today I am going to read Muppet Stories by Richard Chevet. Far Out Talent. It was almost showtime at the Muppet Theater. The singing chickens were warming up, the juggling hippos were practicing, and Fozzie Bear was trying out his new jokes. Kermit, Kermit, hold everything. Scooter came running in, looking very excited. What's wrong? Karenet asked impatiently. Did the penguins forget their bow ties again? No, no. Scooter cried. Creatures from outer space have landed. Creatures from outer space. Kermit said nervously. Are they here to invade Earth? I don't think so, said Scooter. They look pretty friendly. Everyone gathered around as a group of six strange-looking space creatures appeared backstage. No one had ever seen anything like them. They each had three arms, five green eyes, and bright orange fur. But strangest of all were the small propellers on the tops of their heads. One of the space creatures stepped forward. The propeller on his head started to spin, and soon he was floating a few inches off the floor. Hello, green creature, the floating space visitor said to Kermit. Kermit? Said Gonzo excitedly. They're great. Maybe we could put them in the show. Kermit thought for a few seconds. Gee, I don't know, he said, turning to the aliens. Do you guys have an axe? What is an axe? The creature asked in its weird voice. You know, explained Kermit, something to do on stage. Do you dance? Dance? What is dance? Asked the space being as he slowly flew around Kermit. Hey, I have an idea. Gonzo said. You can sing with the singing chickens. Zing? We know zing, all the aliens said sadly. Then they too rose up into the air. Maybe they play music, suggested Ralph. No music, they replied, while they floated around the room. How about telling jokes? Said Fozzie. Did you hear the one about the two Martians? They wanted to stay overnight on the moon, but they couldn't because the moon was full. Get it? A full moon. Waka, waka. Hum, jukes. No, we know no jukes, said the first creature. He was so sad that his teeth almost touched the ground. I'm sorry, said Kermit. But you don't dance, sing, play music, or tell jokes. I just don't know what you could do in the show. We know have acts, the alien agreed. We go home. And slowly they flew out the door. Gee, too bad, said Gonzo. They seemed like nice space creatures. Yeah, Fozzie nodded. I wish they did something besides fly around all the time. Yeah, added Kermit. They sure did fly a lot. Then suddenly he had an idea. Hey? They can fly. That would be a great act. Scooter, go catch them, quick. Soon the space creatures were on stage, flying around and doing flips and rolls in the air. The audience cheered and applauded. You guys can perform here every night, Kermit said to them after the show. No, thanks, said the alien's leader. We must go now. But why? Asked Kermit. You were great. No can stay, explained the creature as he floated to the door. Must return to our planet with valuable discovery, Jukes. Did you hear the one about the two Martians? Goodbye. Everyone shouted as the spaceship took off and flew away. Come back soon. Called Kermit. We really loved your axe. The garage sale. Every spring, Miss Piggy cleaned up her house from top to bottom. Every spring, she washed windows, aired out pillows, and beat rugs. And every spring, she noticed that she had more and more things to clean. One year, it just got to be too much. This house is too crowded, she said to herself. I think I'll throw out some of this old junk I never use. She was just about to get out the jumbo garbage bags when she had an idea. I'll have a garage sale. She said. She went to the store and got some tag board and a hot pink marker and made a sign. It said, come one, come all, garage sale tomorrow. Great stuff. She posted the sign on her front lawn and then gathered together the things she wanted to get rid of. There was her pink bowling ball from the piggyback league. 
There were her sugar plum fairy wings from the costume ball. There were some ski boots that rubbed and some sandals that squeaked and an old kitty cat clock that went tock tick instead of tick tock. There was a box of old books and beauty magazines. Bright and early the next day, she brought everything out to her garage. Kermit was the first to come. Interesting clock, he said. Piggy looked at the kitty cat clock and remembered the Christmas morning she had found it beneath her tree. It was cute. It says talk tick instead of tick tock she pointed out. I still like it, said Kermit. So do I, said Piggy. Oh, I'm sorry, Kermie, I've changed my mind. It's not for sale. Okay, said Kermit. He moved on to look at something else. Then Gonzo showed up. Hey, these wings are really nifty, he said, trying them on. When she saw them on Gonzo, Piggy remembered the costume ball and how ravishing she had looked. They are nifty, she agreed. I'm sorry, Gonzo. They're not for sale. Besides, they don't do a thing for you. Fozzie was fiddling with the boots, Ralph was rummaging through the old books, and Animal was trying to jam the squeaky sandals onto his feet. Suddenly, Piggy could not stand it for one more second. Hold everything. She yelled, so loudly that Kermit dropped the bowling ball half an inch from his toe. Oh. I've changed my mind, continued Piggy in a very small voice. I'm sorry, but the garage sale is off. Everyone stood still, amazed. Just because I don't use these things anymore, explained Piggy, it doesn't mean one don't need them. They bring back wonderful memories. Each one of these is a part of me. These things are really special to me, and I want to keep them. Please forgive me, everyone. We understand, said Kermit, smiling. Sure we do, said Gonzo. But there is one thing I'd still really like to buy. Gonzo, whatever it is, it's not for sale, said Piggy in exasperation. I'll bet it is, said Gonzo. I really want to buy that nice garage to sell sign, Piggy you see, I have a lot of great stuff I don't need anymore, and, no, Gonzo, laughed Piggy. It's still not for sale. She began gathering up her beloved things to take inside. It's free. You can have it. Hype on Dragon Mountain Dragon Mountain was the biggest mountain around. Its western slope was shaped like a dragon's head and was covered with jagged trees that looked just like long, snaggly teeth. Climbing the steep slopes of Dragon Mountain was hard work, and it was scary, too. But year after year, the bravest frog scouts made the trip, hoping to earn their mountaineering badges. One day, Robin came running up to Kermit. Uncle Kermit. He shouted. I'm going to climb Dragon Mountain today. Do you want to go with me? Good old Dragon Mountain, said Kermit. Why, I haven't climbed it since I was a frog scout myself. Let's go. In an hour, Robin and Kermit were on the trail. What a great day, said Robin. And it was. The sun was shining, and the sky was blue. After a little while, they got to the part of the mountain called Dragon's Neck. Here, the trail went straight up. Sheesh! This mountain is a lot steeper than when I was a frog scout. Said Kermit, puffing and wheezing. He stopped to rest and suddenly noticed that Robin was no longer behind him. Robin? He called. Robin? Coming, Uncle Kermit, said Robin, scurrying up from behind. What happened to you? Said Kermit. Dash I was just following these frog scout rules for safe mountain hiking, said Robin, holding up a little book. Okay, said Kermit. But stay with me from now on. They climbed, and they climbed, and at last they reached the highest point of Dragon Mountain. It was a pointy peak with a twisted pine tree on top of it. They could see far into the distance in every direction. The air was clear and sweet. The only sound they heard was the whistling of the wind in the trees. What a great day to climb a mountain, said Robin. I can't wait to watch the sunset, he added, pointing to the reddening western sky. Sunset? Said Kermit. We'd better get going, or we ll get lost in the dark. Quickly they started down the mountain. For a while, they scurry along the shadowy trail in silence. Then they came to a place where it branched off in many directions. Let's see, said Kermit, 
trying to figure out which way to go. Oh, yes. I remember this big rock here, he added, slapping a large gray boulder with confidence. We'll take a right turn here. He turned right and stopped. Uncle Kermit, said Robin. Wait a second, I'm thinking, said Kermit. This doesn't look right. Let's try going this way. He started off in another direction. No, it's over this way, he said. Then he stopped suddenly and looked around in the growing gloom. He blinked his eyes. Something didn't feel right. Uncle Kermit, said Robin. Not now, Robin, said Kermit. I have to think. Through the woods, a low, howling sound began. WHWH what's that? Kermit said. Oh, that's the call of the night singing shrike, said Robin. We learned all about bird calls at Frog Scouts. Sounds more like a night singing shriek to me, muttered Kermit under his breath. It's definitely time to go home. Uncle Kermit. Why don't we just look for the white rags that I tied to the trees as we hiked up? Robin pointed to the one right next to him on the trail. Amazing? Said Kermit. That was a great idea. Robin held up his Frog Scout book. It was right here, on page 12, he said. What a scout! Said Kermit. I've really forgotten a lot since I was a Frog Scout. It's a good thing I'm with you. Shucks, it was nothing, said Robin. And with the rags gleaming in the darkening sky, they easily found their way back down the mountain. You did it! Said Kermit. Now you'll get your badge. No, we did it, Uncle Kermit. And I'm going to keep my new mountaineering badge right next to your old one, said Robin, smiling proudly. Up, up, and away. On the day the big fair came to town, Gonzo was so excited he could hardly wait for the gates to open. He was the first one into the fairgrounds, the first one to ride on the ferris wheel, and the first one to see the great big sign with the fancy blue letters. Owner of hot air balloon needs sensible, reliable assistant, it said. See Mr. Samus. What a great job. Thought Gonzo. I love hot air balloons. He immediately ran off to find Mr. Samus and ask him for the job. Mr. Samus looked carefully at Gonzo. Taking care of my balloon is hard work, he said. All kinds of things could go wrong. Are you sensible and reliable? Absolutely. Said Gonzo. I'm sensible from head to toe, and I'm as reliable as the day is long. Please give me a chance. Well, I'll try you out, said Mr. Samus. Watch the balloon while I go to the store. Don't let anyone touch it. You pee. Said Gonzo. He sat down next to the balloon and tried to look reliable. A kitten walked by. Hello, kitty. Said Gonzo. The kitten glanced at Gonzo, and then it hopped into the balloon's wicker basket. No, kitty, he? Cried Gonzo, leaping up. You're not allowed to go in there. But the kitten just looked at Gonzo, looked down at the ground below, and then mewed as if its heart would break. That cat can't get down. Gonzo realized. But no one is supposed to touch the balloon, not even me. I need to use good sense. But what's the sensible thing to do? The kitten mewed again. I have to save that cat. Decided Gonzo. He climbed into the balloon's basket. But on the way, he accidentally knocked aside the ropes that held the balloon to the ground. The balloon began to climb into the air. Soon the ground was far away and the balloon was skimming along, bumping the tops of trees. Gonzo could see Mr. Samus returning. Help? Gonzo called. Mr. Samus began running along on the ground, following the balloon. Turn the red knob to the left. He cried. Gonzo searched for the red knob. The balloon wafted past the ferris wheel, much too close for comfort. On your right. On your right. Turn the knob. Called Mr. Samus. Finally, Gonzo found the knob and turned it. Gradually, the balloon began to lower, and at last it came to rest in a field just outside the fairgrounds. Mr. Samus quickly tied it down, and then he turned to Gonzo. What happened? He asked. Miserably, Gonzo held up the kitten, who was now purring loudly. Ariel. Said Mr. Samus. 
My cat. Did she jump into the basket? Yes. Said Gonzo. She looked so scared, I had to save her. But somehow I kicked the ropes off by mistake. Now you'll never believe that I'm sensible and reliable, he finished sadly. Yes, I will, Gonzo, said Mr. Samus kindly. I believe you're sensible enough to help an animal you think is in trouble. And I know I can rely on you to tell the truth. I just need to give you easier things to do to begin with. He patted Gonzo on the back. Now, how about a little ride? I think I'm going to like this job. Said Gonzo happily, as they floated up into the sky. The next story is, Piggy's new leaf. Miss Piggy looked around her kitchen and sighed. Kermit, Fozzie, and Gonzo had come for lunch, and the room was a mess. Fozzie had shown everyone his new juggling act, and now there were peas stuck to the ceiling. Gonzo had dripped mashed potos all over the table. And there were dirty dishes everywhere. Piggy had begun to pick up the dishes when she noticed something on the floor. She bent down to pick it up. It was a book. Then she remembered. Fozzie had given this very book to Kermit for his birthday. Kermit had been talking about it for days. Fi was really enjoying it. Hum, thought Piggy. I wonder if it's good. She sat down, just for a moment, opened the book to page 1, and began to read. It was a wonderful book, and she read on and on. She forgot all about doing the dishes or cleaning up the kitchen. As she continued reading, her elbow inched closer and closer to a half-empty glass of chocolate milk on the table. And when she lifted her arm to turn the page, oh, no. The glass tilted, and the chocolate milk spilled all over Kermit's new book. Piggy grabbed for a napkin and tried to wipe up the mess, but it was no use. The book was soggy and ruined. And just at that moment, Kermit walked in the back door. Piggy? He asked. Did I leave my book here? Uh, uh, no, I don't think so, Kermie, sputtered Piggy, hiding the book behind her back. One day been cleaning, and I didn't see it. Gee, said Kermit. It seems to be missing. I guess I'll go home and look some more. When Kermit had gone, Piggy wrapped the book in a dish towel. Then she rushed up to her room and hid the book under her bed. Kermit spent the next few days looking for the book. Of course, he didn't find it. And Piggy felt worse and worse. If Kermit ever finds out what happened, she worried, he'll never speak to me again. What am I going to do? But then she came up with a plan. All she had to do was to buy a new book for Kermit and pretend she had found it. He would never know. So Piggy sneaked out to the bookstore. She found the book on the shelf. But when she went to the cash register to pay for it, who should she find there but Kermit himself, with another copy of the book in his hands. Gee, Piggy, said Kermit. This is really nice of you. But I should buy the book myself. After all, one lost it. No, you didn't. Piggy blurted out. Oh, Kermie, it was all my fault. I was reading your book, and the chocolate milk spilled on it, and I hid it because I was afraid you'd never talk to me again, and now you probably hate me. And Miss Piggy burst into tears. Piggy Kermit said gently. You're my friend. I don't hate you. But it would have been easier if you had told me right away. You're right, sniffed Piggy till never do anything like this again. And she never did. The next story is, Kermit and the Best present of all. It was Saturday night, and Kermit was rushing around his house plumping pillows and straightening pictures. He only had a few minutes before all his guests arrived. Everything had to be just right for Fozzie's surprise party. There would be games, balloons, cake, and a big happy birthday banner that Kermit had made from an old blanket. At last, the doorbell rang. Kermit ran to answer it and found all his friends standing in the hall. Hi, everybody. He called to his guests. Come on in. Ralph entered first, carrying a package wrapped in pretty paper with musical notes on it. Where do we put the presents? He asked cheerfully. Presents? Gasped Kermit. Yikes. I was so busy blowing up balloons, baking the cake, mixing up the punch, and doing everything else, I totally forgot a present for Fozzie. 
Now what'll I do? Couldn't you wrap up something in the house? Asked Gonzo, trying to be helpful. I found a chocolate-covered beanbag for Fozzie in my closet. Oh, I don't know what to do, cried Kermit. I wanted so much to make this the perfect party. How could I forget Fozzie's present? But Kermit didn't have any time to worry about it, because the doorbell was ringing. He knew it was Fozzie, who thought he was coming over for a quiet birthday dinner with Kermit. Shh! Kermit warned. Everybody be quiet. When his friends were all hidden, he rushed to the door to let Fozzie in, trying to look as if nothing was going on. Oh, hi, Fozzie, said Kermit. Come on in. Dinner's almost ready. Fozzie stepped into the living room. Surprise! Yelled everyone, popping out of closets and hiding places. Fozzie fell back and laughed with joy. Each time he discovered another friend or another special treat that Kermit had arranged, he grew more excited. It was truly a wonderful party, from the pin the nose on the clown game to the coconut and banana cream birthday cake. The guests had a great time. Kermit was so busy listening to the jokes and dancing that he forgot his worries about Fozzie's present. But when Robin squealed, Fozzie, aren't you going to open your presents? Kermit felt bad all over again. Fozzie received all sorts of neat gifts. Fi got a glow-in-the-dark bow tie from Floyd, fake eyeglasses with a big rubber nose from Zoot, a box of honey granola from Janice, and a big picture of Piggy in a pink lace frame, from Piggy, of course. Even Gonzo's chocolate-covered beanbag made him smile. Thanks, Gonzo, he said. I've never seen one of these before. Really? I have six of them. Gonzo exclaimed happily. I'd like to thank everyone for being so nice to me on my birthday, Fozzie said when he finished opening his presents. But there's something I especially have to say to Kermit. Kermit gulped. I'm sorry, Fozzie, he began. I wanted to get you a gift, but I was so busy planning the party, I forgot. Fozzie looked confused. What was Kermit talking about? A gift? Kermit, he said, this whole party was your present to me. Time for cake. Announced Piggy, bringing in the cake Kermit had made. It was covered with lighted candles. I'm going to make my wish right out loud, said Fozzie, beaming. My wish is that you'll be my friends forever and ever. The next story is, Clothes make the Gonzo. Gonzo buckled the last buckle on his galoshes, stood up, and looked in his dressing room mirror. No doubt about it. It was his best outfit ever. In addition to the black rubber boots, Gonzo had on a pair of red and white striped tights, a big white shirt with purple polka dots, a pair of glasses with black and white checked frames, and a green Robin Hood hat. You're a handsome guy. He said to his reflection in the mirror. As he turned to try and catch a glimpse of his back, he heard a knock and then the door opened. Scooter stuck his head in. Five minutes, Gonzo, he said. Better get dressed. I am dressed said Gonzo. I mean, you'd better put on the clothes you're going to wear on stage, said Scooter. I'm going to wear this, said Gonzo. Scooter shook his head. You've worn some weird outfits on the show, he said, but this one takes the cake. He closed the door. I don't care what he says, said Gonzo to his reflection. I think I look colorful. Gonzo turned off the light and walked out to wait in the wings. You look like number one on the worst dressed list. Said Miss Piggy. Another bizarre outfit from the Gonzo collection of bizarre outfits. Said Ralph. This is no time to tease Gonzo. Said Kermit. Leapin' Lenny is in the audience tonight. We have to be our best. Leapin' Lenny and Jetlag are my favorite band, said Ralph. Leapin' Lenny. Sighed Miss Piggy. What a dreamboat. I'd better go powder my nose, as he will certainly want to go out for a late, romantic snack with Moi after the show she ran off to her dressing room. Gonzo suddenly felt embarrassed. A rock legend was sitting in the audience and he was wearing an outfit that no one liked. He must look really bad. Maybe he still had time to change into something else. You're on, Gonzo. Said Scooter. Too late. Gonzo took a deep breath and stepped onto the stage. Once he was in front of the audience, he soon forgot about his outfit. He sang, 
danced, juggled telephones, and gave the best performance of his life. And when it was over, Li Pinlini led the audience in a standing ovation. On the way back to his dressing room, he saw everyone clustered around Scooter. Li Pinlini is on his way backstage. Scooter said. There he is. Said Kermit. Gosh. Said Ralph. The guy who sings 30,000 feet and climbing. Miss Piggy went up to Linny and smiled charmingly. I reserved a table for us at my favorite cafe, she said. But Linny didn't hear her. He walked straight up to Gonzo. Gonzo, my main blue man. Said Lee Pin Linny how about loaning me your clothes for my concert tomorrow night? I did those threads. You mean you want to borrow my outfit to sing in? Said Gonzo. Not borrow, said Lenny. Trade? Lenny offered Gonzo a jet lag t-shirt that said the Untired World Tour. He also gave him some blue jeans with interesting holes, and enough tickets to his concert so the whole game could go. The next night, they all went to the concert. And when Lee Pin Lenny jumped on stage wearing his new clothes, no one cheered harder than Gonzo. The next story is, The Great Dress Disaster, Mirror, mirror, on the wall, Moi is the fairest of them all, said Miss Piggy gaily. She was very excited, for tonight her favorite frog was taking her to a fancy ball. Piggy went to the closet. Hanging there in all its glory was the most beautiful white satin gown, the one she had been saving just for this occasion. Piggy stood in front of the mirror and held up the dress. I really am pretty gorgeous, aren't I, mirror? She laughed. Suddenly, Piggy's smile turned to a frown. There, right smack in the front of the dress, was a teeny little black spot. This will never do, she said firmly. Into the kitchen she marched. She grabbed a sponge and dabbed at the spot. Oh, no, she said, looking at the dress in dismay. The little spot had spread out and formed a blotch. This will not ruin my evening, she said determinedly. I'll get this fixed in plenty of time. Piggy hurried to the laundry room, tossed the dress into the washing machine, added some soap, and turned it on. There? She said with satisfaction. That will do it. While the dress washed, Piggy took a shower. But as she was drying her hair, she heard a loud noise. Kerchunk? 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 It went. It was coming from the washing machine. Eek! Screamed Piggy running to the laundry room. As soon as she got there, she realized what had happened, she had set the controls for Super Scrubber instead of Gentle. She grabbed the dress out of the washing machine. Piggy looked at her watch. Yikes! She said. Kermit will be here any minute. She tossed the dress into the dryer and raced to the attic to find her sewing kit. Frantically, Piggy searched through one box after another in the dusty old attic. Finally, she found her thread. The bell for the dryer rang, and Piggy ran downstairs. She pulled the dress out of the dryer and put it on to see how bad the damage was. It was pretty bad. It was ripped on the left sleeve, it had a hole in the side seam, and the hem was coming down. In fact, the whole thing was frayed and tattered. And what was more, when she looked in the mirror, she discovered that her face was covered with dust from the attic. Mirror, mirror, on the wall, she screeched, this is not a fairy tale. This is a horror movie. Ding dong. Oh, good grief, who could that be, bothering her when she was in such a state? Piggy sprinted for the door. It was Kermit. Piggy was so frantic, she'd forgotten it was time for him to pick her up. Oh, she said. Hi? She wished she were invisible. Hi, Piggy, said Kermit. You look great. I knew you would think of a wonderful outfit for the costume ball. Piggy stared at Kermit. He was wearing a red cape and a shiny gold crown. A costume ball. Said Piggy. Ha, 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 ha. I mean, of course, a costume ball. I thought my frog prince costume would be the best costume of all, but I have to hand it to you. That's one terrific outfit. But Piggy, what are you? Me? Why? I'm, Cinderella. That's it? I'm Cinderella after the ball. My coach is a pumpkin again, I'm all in ashes, and I'm wishing my prince would come. And here you are. 
Here I am, said Kermit. Now, let's go to the costume ball and dance and have a good time and live happily ever after. And they did.